are you ready to identify your superpower? What is special about you, how it's affecting your relationships and how you can make a massive impact in this world. I am super excited for today's guest, but first, if you haven't taken the mindset assessment to see if your mindset is stopping you or helping you head over to lifepixuniversity.com forward slash mindset that's lifepixuniversity.com forward slash mindset today's guest he i should say is the author of your message matters together with his wife who helps him run his business and is a major, major effect of the business without her. I don't really think it would actually happen and won't grow to how big it is today. Thank you so much, Jonathan and Charity for being here. I'm excited to be speaking with you. You want to start by telling us how you guys met? Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, hi, it's nice to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Um, okay. So we met through our church, uh, just some activities that they were having for young adults. And um, I had a boyfriend at the time and I saw Jonathan and acknowledged him, but he seemed to have a lot of friends that were girls around him. So I was like, "Mm -mm, I don't play that. I'm not going to be another girl in your arms. So um, so when I did break up with the other guy, I still didn't pay him very much attention for a while. (laughs) Poor guy. (laughs) But the thing was, I was not I was not interested in any of those girls that were hanging around me. It was truly just. Friends, but she didn't believe me. Nope. She's like, I'm not going to be another girl in your arm. So <laughs> what, what made it a challenge? I think in the end it made it a challenge for me. So then it's like, okay, how am I going to win the girl? Right. Cause she was the one I was the most interested in and she was the only one that didn't pay any attention to me. So he's yeah. like that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's kind of where it started. How yeah. did we eventually, um, start dating? I'm trying to remember. Um, well, I ended up breaking up with that guy and we just started kind of chatting and I kind of let you like be present in my world. (laughs) And, um, and then we just started chatting and hanging out a little bit. And then I, I would say, we just talked about this, that you gave me a Valentine card and we were just friends. We were just getting to know each other, but I had had a yucky day, not having a Valentine, you know, you're single and you for some reason you see flowers and roses and balloons everywhere. And, um, it was just a yucky day and he wasn't going to give me one, but I kind of told him about my yucky day. And then he just pops out this Valentine's card. It's just a friend cheesy card, but for some reason I went very cheesy. Okay. I think I like him. (laughs) We weren't dating, but we were talking enough that I felt like, Oh, Valentine, should I have a card? So I like got a card, but I wasn't sure if I was going to give it. (laughs) <laughs> and it, it it's what's, what's so funny about it is the front of the card said um, for a special friend. Yeah. But then it had this really cheesy, big heart on it with like lace to like, I'm looking at it going, how <laughs> the, you look at the card and then it says friend. It just doesn't work together, yeah. but it worked for me because it's like, I, it I was like right on the spot with that one. Yes. So. Johnny, yeah, like spot. it said, your message without it being like super direct. <laughs> Yeah. Cause you don't want to be over the top. Cause then you're like, okay, we're just started talking and like you're way over the top. So it was like, yeah. that's why I wasn't sure if I wanted to give it. But when she told me how bad of a day she was having on Valentine's, he was I said, well, maybe this will help. <laughs> well, I guess it worked. So yeah. tell me, um, how many years ago was this? Like how long are you married for? Oh gosh. We are going on. Was it 20? Oh shoot. T- we should have been prepared for 24. this. 24. Yes. 24 years. It'll be 24, 24 this years. Summer. Wow. This summer. Yeah. So we oh. dated for about two. We dated for two years, got engaged and married a little so, bit after that. It's about 26 years ago. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, how has your relationship changed from then, like 26 years ago, or even 24 years ago when you were married until like today? Oh, gosh. That's a lot of years. I would say is the fact that we, somewhere along the way, I don't know if it was five years in, seven years into our marriage that it finally clicked for us that to make a relationship work, I needed to be meeting her number one need and she would be working on my number one need in the relationship. And by doing so, we get our needs met. For the first few years, it was always about me trying to figure out how to get her to meet my need instead of me focusing on her. 
And that was kind of a huge yeah, aha cool. moment for us um, in our relationship. And I think it, it came out of, uh, we read a book called The Five Love Languages. Yeah. And that kind of started the conversation of, even though we have uh, we were married, we had, we have one, at least one, yeah, we had two kids, but they were <clears> really, really young. And uh, it was like, even though we've gone and done life together, it's different than taking interest in really knowing that other person and what their needs are. I think, I think that was really big for us to understand what their need is and then have that desire to fulfill it. I mean, even recently I was like, you know what, there are three things and I haven't told him this. There are three things in my head right now that I'm like, I have to ask for these three things for several years and I have not gotten them. And so just recently I'm like, I should write that down. Maybe I should tell him, maybe I should tell my kids to tell him, just give me these three things. Like I just, I want them. And, um, but then I honestly went back to the same idea of what he was talking about and the idea of, but that is so selfish of me and wanting to have my needs met and expecting him to read my mind or expecting him to do for me. And I had not even asked him, Hey, is there anything that you want that you haven't got you've asked for? Like, not even asking that question. And I did actually ask him that the other day and I can't tell you what it was, but, um, but anyway, but the idea of caring more about the other person and meeting their needs and making them happy and content, if you're doing that for that person, they're happy. And if they're doing it for you, you're happy. And and it's just, it's magic. <laughs> it is right. <laughs> so what, oh, you said it was the book that like, that helped you make that switch. Yeah. I used to ask people if they actually use the love languages in their marriage and what their love languages are for us to be able to understand the differences of how we each have our love languages. And even in the love languages, we each have like a specific way of how we want them and how we, how we most benefit from it. Even though a healthy person could receive and give in all five love languages. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so like, for for example, example for for me it was um it was words of affirmation i think and hers was time so that and that made a lot of sense to me looking back over like what she really wanted around her birthday or what she really wanted at certain times was just for us to get away to spend time together and that that was her feeling love by me making an intentional decision to spend time with her. Like uh, our birthdays are three days apart <laughs> and it's this weekend. Happy birthday. Okay. So we're going, we're going off on a little trip for a couple of days. Yes. And that's just another example of like, you know, time is what, how she feels loved is when I've, when I'm not focused on my work, when I'm not focused on all the other things, and I'm a hundred percent just focused on being in the present moment with her. I don't want to drag this out, but at the same time, another book or lesson or whatever that we were diving into and learning was his needs, her needs. Yeah. And I think, I think that is where the need concept actually came from was understanding that the way he is, it's not because he's being selfish or because he's just a guy, but it's a need or the way I am is not just because I'm emotional or whatever. It's, it's a need. So I think understanding our needs, then you can meet them better. So I think that was the other thing we didn't mention. Yeah. We actually had Dr. Harley, the author of that book, his needs, her, his, his needs, her needs on a real oh, wow. while back. I have to check up what episode that was and that's cool. Let you guys know. Yeah. If you had to check out that episode. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's move on a little bit. Where, at what point did you start, um, your work of currently getting, helping people get their message out. So for me, that started way back in 2009, um, with a blog and, uh, blogging was like the main thing back then. There wasn't a lot of podcasting going on, a lot of, of YouTubing and Facebook and all of that. So, uh, that's where I started. And, uh, I started with focusing on what I had experience with at the moment. And for me, that was, uh, doing career coaching for accounting professionals. Uh, I had spent seven years as an executive recruiter for accounting professionals. And I thought, well, man, I've got all of this knowledge up here from working with people for several years. Why not start putting that advice into a blog? 
And then once that started to pick up steam, it was like, well, maybe we can figure out how to make money with this website, right? And so then over the course of about two, two and a half years, we were able to, to figure out about 10 to 11 different ways to earn money with that website. And then that became the big question people were asking was, Jonathan, how did you do this? And so that's when I started launching into this idea of helping people discover their message. And then how do you turn that into a platform? And it's kind of brought us to this present day of, uh, you know, the book and the training programs and the courses and charity works full-time in the business as well. And we've got a team of people that help us, but it just started with a guy who wanted to share advice on a blog. Wow. Well, so how does that play into your relationship with charity working together with you? It's like you spend the whole day together. <laughs> Um, so I actually was working for my church for, for like 12 years, I think it was. Um, so that was actually harder than what we're doing now because it was wake up and go two different directions. And I just didn't like that. Um, not being in life, like with him. So, I mean, but don't get me wrong. I loved my job and it was, it was important to me. Um, I was in hospitality at my church and Jonathan actually volunteered for me. So I was his boss. And so that was wonderful. But, um, but to, to have the opportunity to come work with John has been a dream come true for me. Like that's what I wanted to do was to work from home and, um, play house, but then also just to be that, that help and support for him where I've seen him over the years, um, doing a lot of it on his own. And then I just didn't have the mental space or energy to do anything to lift up anything for him to um, carry any of that with him or for him. So, um, so getting to work from home has been amazing. We do get along well. We don't. Um, we just not. We aren't confrontational. Um, but to answer your question, how has it affect us? Um, what I know of Jonathan is that he is almost more excited for me to be able to work from home and to work with him and to be where I am happy than he is for me to help him. And I feel like I'm really helping him. And like, there's been a lot of changes and improvements and things that have been able to happen because he has extra hands and because I'm able to, to take some of that load for him. But he genuinely, I believe is more excited about how happy I am than the selfishness of him having me. Does that make sense? Makes so, a lot of sense. Yeah. I think yeah. it just shows what your relationship is like. <laughs> Yeah. And that's what I was most excited about is that she had the flexibility to work whenever she wanted. So, you know, our daughter's currently away at college, but when our daughter was home for just the Christmas break, there was opportunities for the two of them to go off, to go shopping together in the middle of a work day. And mm -hmm. that doesn't bother me at all. It's like, that's why I wanted you to have this type of job because I know you'll handle anything that needs to be handled later. Maybe you want to spend just a couple of hours after dinner, making sure that checking in, making sure everything's getting taken care of, but I don't have to worry about that. I just love that she gets that, uh, gets the benefits of the work, the type of work that we get to do. Yeah. Now, do you think because of the type of work that you do of helping people identify their message and, it's very personal for everyone and it has a major impact on the world. Um, does that specific work affect you? Like you, Jonathan, have your message of helping people identify their message, but like, what about charity? Like, how do I fit in and feel excited about? It? Well, so I love the encourager role and I love the, um, the being the cheerleader on the sidelines. Like, so when, when we are helping people and it's so cool to say, we, when we are helping people that have a passion and a message and they succeed and they do well, and they have, um, accomplished something like, I feel like I'm the mom or the aunt in the stands, like cheering them on, like genuinely super excited for them. So I feel like that's probably the biggest role that I play is just, uh, be the support and encourager. So, so I don't even know if that well, was your question, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I want that's part of it, but also part, like if you're helping everyone identify their message, right? What's your specific message? Because your message is just cheering on Jonathan, which is a very big, valid job or yeah. 
or something okay. else. Like, I feel like you know so, your answer is like, I don't have to continue. No, no, I can, I can do this. We've had these conversations. I, yeah, had this conversation. I can do this because I read this book called Your Message Batters. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. First of all, I'm not a reader. So that was a struggle. It took me until he got it the audio It was dedicated out. to you. I know, but I'm not a reader. So when he got the audio book out, that was just for me. Um, I have read his book. So, but what I'm telling you is honestly, I even went through the beginning of the book, like, okay, I've just had a career change and, and I am trying to figure out who I am. And so I wish I had it in front of me because I don't know if I can remember the words exactly, but that is the role I play is supporter and encourager. And, and I'm diving in with that and whatever that looks like and however that comes out, um, it may be different, um, in different areas or different, whatever, but, but that's from what I've learned from the book. That is my, I guess my message. I don't yeah. know, but that's my superpower. It's, superpower. it's just to yeah. support and encourage. Like, honestly, that's, that's what I it's do. a really big thing. Cause there, you know, how much goes into it and how much it takes to get out your message and there's so many parts that people don't see. They do not realize how much work actually goes into it. And it, that, that support, that encouragement, that, that lifting that you said of the helping him get out his message. And it's not like you're like, Oh, like a secondary person to it. It's because of you, I think more that it's been able to become what it has become. Oh, absolutely. And that's why the dedication has her in it because long before I thought about writing books, she told me you're going to write a book one day. And Back then I was reading books, but I'd never really thought about writing a book until she planted that seed in me. And that's an example of how an encourager and a supporter can be a superpower into creating that belief in someone who can then go on and do something that impacts many more people. It's a powerful role. So some people have the job of giving the message. Some people have a job of being the supporter. Are there any other jobs in here that someone could have like that's their superpower? So it really is how that, how do they show up best? So for example, in the book, I talk about in order to have a powerful message, you need to have three things, purpose, people, and passion. So the people is the obvious one. Like who are you trying to help? The passion can sometimes be really misunderstood. Passion is such as this crazy word, but at the end of the day, the way I define it is it's really about uh, you being, what problem are you passionate about solving at least for the next two to five years? Like start there. So that's that. But then the piece that is also highly missing is the purpose piece. And the purpose piece is how you show up best because all of us have different personalities. We have different ways of viewing the world, our different experiences, different skill sets. And when you are able to identify what that thing is, like for me, and this was a discovery for me several years ago, was that I'm a resourceful teacher. So then I started thinking like, well, how could I express that being a resourceful teacher? That's what I have that can help others. Just like hers is an encourager. Mine was a resourceful teacher. Uh, in the book, we talk about the four influencer voices, which is writer, speaker, teacher, coach. And so anybody who wants to influence, they, they're primarily probably falling into one of those four as one that they kind of more naturally tend to do. And so when you put your superpower together with your influencer voice, that's when you know you've nailed down your purpose. And here's the good news is that's never going to change. You're always going to express yourself that way. And so your, your audience may change, your passions may change. That's okay because you're going to show up as your best self when you lean into the natural way you are wired. So I think that's a, an important part. Yeah, very important. Thank you for that. Do you have any specific tips or um, suggestions to help people identify it? Yeah, the, the, the most basic tip I can give you is to get insight from other people. So a mentor told me years ago, you can't read the label when you're inside the bottle. And what that means is, we don't see how we show up best for others because we live in our own skin. We think that what we do, everybody does. Uh, another friend said, what's ordinary to you is magic to others. And we sometimes forget because we're so close to it that the stuff that comes natural to us doesn't come natural to everybody else. So the, the simple exercise is go ask five people who know you best how they would describe you 
in three words or less. So choose three separate words. You know, for me, maybe it was resourceful, uh, inspirational, practical. And then when you get those, all those words from those five different people, you'll see what kind of overlaps. And that shows you, well, listen, this thing you do, it's ordinary to you, but it's magic to others. Yeah, I like that. It's like really specific. Go find five people, three words, not like you don't need like a whole long like speech about it because then it will just confuse you. And then you could see like what words overlap or have similarities that could really, really, really make a difference. Yeah. Now, what is a challenge for you guys, either at work or in your relationship? So one that, that keeps popping up is that we talked about and we, we have to continue to like keep each other on it is because we work from home or we work from anywhere, work is always around. And so we sometimes have to catch ourselves or even kind of mention to the other person, hey, let's not talk about work. For example, a challenge would be, oh, we get a Thursday night, you know, and we have this opportunity to go out to eat, just the two of us. It's easy to talk business because we're both in it. But that's, we're more than just coworkers, right? And so we have to be intentional about that. And so I think that's a constant challenge that we have to, to check up on. Um, I think the other one, just in, in a, any marriage uh, that we've talked about a lot is just communication. Um, there were a lot of times earlier in our marriage where we get so frustrated at that other person because they didn't know what we wanted them to do. And then we realized, well, we didn't talk about it. Right. So talk about that. Oh, talk about that. Yeah. Um, so I know there's a big aha moment for you. So I, I don't know if I know exactly what you're talking about, but I do think communication is so important. And I, I do know. I can't I, read your mind. Yeah. I was getting ready to say, and I do know at the very beginning when we first uh, got married, it would like, I would boil well, even the last couple of years, I would boil and get so frustrated because he wasn't doing blank. It's common sense. Doesn't he know or whatever. And it's just that simple reminder of he cannot read your mind. And, um, and for whatever reason, it's just hard just to sometimes just say it like it really frustrates me when da, 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 da. But when you do that, it opens up communication and it just takes your relationship to a new level. Every time you open up like that, instead of having all these feelings of that person, not meeting your expectations, which they don't know what they are. So communication's huge. Yeah, yeah. it's it's like really hard, um, to get it started, but like once you're in it, you, there's like a surfing connection that happens and it really, like you said, it brings you up to the next level. I personally find it addicting. <laughs> it's like, here's a challenge that like, I want to be able to solve and I want to be able to have this hard conversation. And sometimes it's really hard, but it's like amazing to see what will come out of it afterwards. It's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Now what is one ritual that you guys do that you think it like really affects your relationship? Let's see. You, you make me go first. Yes. Why are you laughing at me? Cause I don't know. Well, one ritual I would say is at least once a week having breakfast or lunch or something together. I think it, it helps us. Because we're different people, and I give you an example. So I'm more of a morning person. She's a little bit more of kind of a middle of the day, even evening person. And so what happens is when she's got these list of like, you know, things that we need to solve, right? Every 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 situation you got like things that that you need to figure out. And she comes to me, you know, in the evening when I'm wiped out and starts bringing me these, well, we need to decide about this and we need to do this. We need to do that. And what's my response? Um, he doesn't make any decisions after nine. Yes. No decisions after nine. Cause they're going to be bad decisions. <laughs> They'll be bad decisions. So, so here's the point. So we started doing a Friday morning breakfast and she knows there's once a week where she can, she has that, you know, she has me cornered. I guess you could say <laughs> cornered with food in front of me, which is a good thing. And so that's when we'll get, we'll get decisions made and I'm, I'm all in, I'm more fresh. I can think clearly we can make really good decisions. And so that's a, that's a normal ritual that's worked really well for us. I agree. Yeah. I, that should have been the first thing off the top of my head, because that is something that we do that it just, 
for me, it, it reconnects us. It puts us back on the same page. It gives me a chance to ask the one thing or say the one thing that I've kind of held off on because I only think of it at 11 o'clock at night or whatever. So, um, so, but knowing that that's a set aside time for just us is really, really nice. But of course you have to have other hobbies and things that you enjoy doing together. Um, so like right now we're going through a ser- a TV series, so things like that, just time together where you're next to each other, you're side by side, you're hand in hand, sitting out in the backyard, watching the sunset, just you know, all those little things that are, um, just the two of you. So, yeah, you know what I like about that so much is besides for the fact that it really connects with has that connection part that keeps you in your relationship going and you're working together with your brains is the fact that it, I don't know what type of decisions you're making, how much like energy it takes from you, but it probably t- saves time because you don't have to like every time start over another question. I have this another said, so you gather all your questions, you sit down for an hour or two, however long, and you go through all of them, answer all of them in a really nice, calm and like connecting manner. Yeah. Yeah. It works. It's not like we don't talk all week. Oh, it's no, just no. The, I don't mean to it's make just it sound like that. You're talking right things. now. <laughs> yeah. It's just the heavy things. What should we do? How should we handle this? Like, you right. Know, yeah, exactly. Heavy things it's like that, also it's every day it brings up that energy again versus you're like, okay, yes. I'll have to handle this hard thing. I have space on Friday to do with it. Right. I'll deal with it Designated. Then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Now, before we get to our final question, where could we connect with you and learn more about you? Well, since we work together in the same place. <laughs> um, so uh, the book that we've referenced, you can go check that out at yourmessagemattersbook.com. So it's just yourmessagemattersbook.com. And uh, you can actually get a free copy. Well, all we ask is you pay shipping. It's just a way for us to get the message out there to more people. Um, and then the main website is marketyourmessage.com. That's where you can find us. Amazing. Okay. Now, final question is how would you describe an extraordinary relationship without using love, trust, or communication? Thoughtfulness. I'd say thoughtfulness. That means you're thinking of the other person, not just yourself. The word laugh comes to mind just to be lighthearted and laugh. Yeah, Yeah. that's a good one. No, that's a really good one. Oh, thanks, babe. No, it is because (laughs) like you should actually enjoy being around each other. Yeah. Keep it light. There's too many serious, heavy things. Yeah, it's a really good answer, especially after like just finishing off this heavy Friday, <laughs> even though it's not, you see, even there, you make it into like a, a nice experience by like that food and that designated time and things like that. Yeah. And I would say one more I would add to it is presence, not mm-hmm. like giving someone presence, but giving them your presence. Being present. Because it's so yeah. easy for, you know, the phone's always there. I mean, how many times have you seen, I know we've talked about this before, where you see couples that are out to eat, but they're and you're like sitting right across from you, but they're not talking. Like one's on their phone. They're like, you're, you're together, but yet you're, you're missing an opportunity to just be fully present with each other. And so like, we're big um, sticklers when we're sitting around the dinner table, we have to have one son at home that let's put the phone away, at least while we're having dinner together so that we can just have conversation because it's easy for you to have, you know, the earbuds in and you got something you're watching and you're all sitting at the same table, sitting in the same room. So that that's a, I think giving someone a gift of your presence and attention is huge. Agreed. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jonathan and Charity. This was really fun. I appreciate you being here speaking with us today. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Appreciate it. That's all for this episode of the Life Fix University podcast, but I have a huge favor to ask of you that will not only support the show, but will also help the people you love most. We are striving for 1 million downloads by the end of 2025, and we can't do this without your help. If you love this episode, please share it with two of your family and friends so they too can rewire their brains to have an extraordinary marriage. It was awesome spending time with you, and I'll see you on the next episode.